I actually figured I haven't done a video in a while, so fuck it, I'll do two in the one day. Um, this idea just came into my head because I was talking about this last night, and what I, what I, what I want to talk about is, um, how do you, how would you, like the regular customer, go about actually making money off spirits? So, it's an industry that's fascinating because you look at people who go out and every year they'll buy something. Like, for example, they'll buy a yearly release of um, the Method of Madness or Middleton or, like, this particular Macallan release, this particular... And why do... Uh, there's two reasons people do this. One, the novelty of it. And it's like, cool, this is only out for a while. I want to have it. Uh, this is how I feel about Dingle Bialtina. Someone, like, get me a bottle. I want a bottle. I, I have to find a bottle of Dingle Bialtina somewhere because it's one of the best fucking whiskeys I've ever had. Um... And some people do it for the investment opportunity. Now, at the moment, um, Irish is not something to invest in. Um, with Irish whiskey, the most you can do is, if you find something rare or unique, um, grab it and try and flip it. Like, for example, I used to live in... Where I used to live in France had a little shop where you could buy bottles of Paris Signature for €40. Euro. I think online Paris Signature goes for 80 because it's discontinued. So you can buy it and you can flip it and you can make small term gains over, like, you could do this regularly. I, even with my pay paycheck, I could do this. This is not a thing I would do because I would, it's, you constantly have to keep ahead of it. And uh, if you are the kind of person who can do that, that's a bit of advice I can, I can give you. Um, another thing you can do is you can look at, like, what kind of products are being endorsed by celebrities, like, at the moment. Every fucking dickhead has a tequila. That's because tequila and mezcal are the two fastest growing spirits in the entire world. And despite the fact that, like, blue agave is a finite resource that takes years to grow. So we're going to see the tequila bubble pop pretty soon. But if you want to make money off spirits, start looking at tequila and mezcal. Um, and mezcal will probably become tequila's successor in a few years because you can use any kind of agave and you don't have to smoke it it's just more traditional um scotch is always a big thing uh like the market is currently dictated by scotch so for example years ago lagavulin like 16 would have been 80 and now it's 120 140 that is with brexit taxes but it's also with the rarity because 12 16 years ago, like, they didn't expect whiskey to get popular. And that's a, another thing about, like, investing and, like, buying bottles of spirit. You never really fucking know what's gonna happen. Um, for, like, five years, like, the world could end, and then all the whiskey that you've bought, you're just sitting in your bunker alone and drinking yourself to death on it. You, obviously, you have to plan for the best options, but, um... It's a difficult market to wrap your head around. And there's also things like cask sales. You can buy a barrel of spirit off a cask sales person, but every fucking dickhead is going to tell you uh, that you should buy their stuff because it's the best. Um, shout out to Dara. Uh, but uh, the Irish whiskey market is also going to hit a bubble fairly soon. Uh, Poor Decisions podcast talked about this, and it's something I think is going to happen too. Um, at the moment, we have, what, three, four distilleries on the island that everyone is sourcing spirit from, which is kind of giving everything the same kind of taste, which means that people are going to only start buying the stuff that either is local to them, um, which is a thing that happened with distilleries in the past, like, local buyers are going to start stocking the neighborhood spirit, which is going to be cool, I hope, if that happens, um, but a lot of these companies will just fall apart because there will be no market for their spirit and they're not competing with anybody their <laughs> key tenant of capitalism is offer something different um and people will buy it uh, and which is the thing that everybody fucking ignores it's like my bar doesn't make money that bar does i'll make them the exact same why am i not making the same money as that guy it's weird but there are unique ways within whiskey to do this. So, like, if you are the kind of person who has a decent chunk of disposable income, keep an eye on whiskey auctions. And if you see something that sticks out to you when you're in a whiskey shop, or uh, even, like, my offie down, where, down near where my folks live, there's a unique cologne down there. I'm going to grab it at some point. Um, 
if you're the kind of person you just stockpile stuff for the novelty of it, cool, great for you. But if you, there is money to be made out there off spirits, you can just keep an eye on stuff and be wary of people associated with brands. You're always going to have people try and sell you their thing as the best thing. And nobody wants to end up with fucking, I, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to fucking spend 10 grand on a barrel. And then years from now that distillery is defunct and I've ended up with something that tastes like absolute dog shit. He said, well, last year he had one of the best whiskies he ever had at the Mickle distillery and still wishes that he'd spent that six grand on a 50 liter barrel. So this is another thing. Like, there will be cool, unique opportunities. But it's also like, do you want to keep that for you? Do you want that to be your thing? Whiskey is intensely personal. Or are you willing to part with it? Some people are, some people aren't. So... Yeah, I just, this was in my brain, I wanted to get it out there. And of course, you know, if you need independent whiskey consultation, there are people like me, there are bartenders like me, general whiskey enthusiasts. Coolest thing about whiskey is we can talk, uh, like, it's such a niche, small industry, at least within Ireland, uh, that we can talk about this, and because we're interested in whiskey, we're interested in other spirits, so a lot of us, without even having finance degrees, do know what the global market looks like because we're passionate about it and we're interested in it and like if you're willing to listen and use the information that's around you you can actually use that to your advantage without exploiting people and sometimes maybe even cut people in it 